Hello and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Hey, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with a trip over to Paradise. That's Nassara Paradise in Costa Rica to get a fishing report from one of the great billfish destinations in the world. Craig Sutton just got back from there. He's going to fill us in on everything that's happening. Then we'll take on Florida. We're going to start up in the northeast section with Captain David Boris, work our way all the way around the state. We're going to talk to the preeminent fishermen in each important area and find out what's biting. I've got some questions for them, too. I want to know how much Florida this fishery is changing. Now, here's why I ask that. It seems like we got a lot more snook up northeast than we used to have, but not nearly as many mahi. I wonder if other parts of the state are seeing the same kind of changes. We're going to find out today. Hey, today's podcast and every podcast we do is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here by Shimano. Bringing people back to nature by DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Tournament Master Chum, the best chum on earth. By Nasara Paradise Fishing, your dream vacation. And by Young Boats, you want the finest in flat, spay, and offshore hybrids, you need to check out youngboats.com. All right, let's lower our landing gear. We'll taxi to a stop and check in. Guess who's standing there with a nice, cool pina colada? None other than Craig Sutton himself. How are we doing, Craigie? Man, I'm great, Ricky. Great. Good, good deal. I'm glad to hear it. Tell me what's going on in Costa Rica. Wide open. Golly, Wide how long open. is this? How long is this bite gonna last? I don't know. I don't know. This we're having the year of years. I mean, it's not. I mean, we always get lots of sales. We always get lots of fish, but this year, above all else, it's monster fish. The mahi. We're catching those 45-plus pounders, and not projected 45. We're putting them on boca grips. They're burying those 50-pound boca. I mean, we got a competitor that goes to 60. They're burying those <laughs> things sometimes. I mean, and it's just not once in a while. We, I think last week we caught three. Mm. It's crazy. And then you mix in some nice yellowfin. You saw that monster yellowfin for, from my... Uh, a week ago today, that fish is well over 200. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep, I agree with you. I've seen some big ones. That is a dandy. Are we still doing double digit sales per day? Yeah, we shot a wow. TV show down there over the weekend, and the the uh, host of the show was complaining because we just sailed like Germany Christmas, you know. And then, of course, the second day of, of shooting the, the episode, we caught some small yellowfin. 20, 25 pounders, no giant ones, but mixed it up a little bit. But, you know, it's been crazy. But we, we had one hiccup day. Um, I guess it was Monday or Tuesday. It was like the bike slowed up a little bit. It was still pretty good, but nothing wide open. And, you know, but she went right back the next day. I mean, we go discover had, a, I think, two or three marlin this week. And, one of them was a pretty decent blue. He was three fifty ish. Got a video of him, and you know, lots of good. Got a twenty three sec second segment of video where he was above the water. How about that? How about Isn't that? that? Cool, oh, that's cool. you know, that's the best. And I don't, I don't care if it's if it's sailfish or or uh, blue marlin, white marlin, white marlin, pretty doggone active fish. Now that you mention it. But, you know, when you get fish tail walking like that, my, my older brother is a, a fish eater from way back, and he refers to sailfish as saltwater garfish um, because you can't eat them. Um, Craigie, I'm going to send him on one of your boats because he can't fish with me anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, gosh, it's, uh, we're not we ain't killing them down there either, but, you know, it's uh, they sure are fun to catch. Oh, I know it, buddy. Hey, if, if, if you don't appreciate them, you and I can't get along. I just, that's just what I, I love them with all my heart, which is one of the reasons I'm so looking forward to being down at Nassara before too much longer. I, one thing I don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about the weather. How many days did you lose the weather last year? Well, you mean last year we were shut down, but right. you know, the year before we did 868 trips. We weathered out on two. On, on how many? Two. Two. <laughs> now we did. So we had about three or four that we rescheduled. Uh huh. But 
days we actually lost. And and the year before we lost three. So that's incredible. That's and we're not fishing rough water. We're not, no, no. We're not taking people out when it's you know it's not safe. It's not like fishing up here out of northeast Florida. You know, <laughs> if, but, uh, yeah. If I had to pick one word to to describe being in Nassara, it's fun. And, and you're not going to take people out there unless they're having a fun time. And I'm certainly looking forward to my upcoming trip. Craigie, we appreciate it as always. Keep sending us pictures. I love the pictures of the world-class fish that we never get to see around here anymore. Boy, that's the truth. But, yeah, the blog's up to date. So if any of the listeners want to go on there, it's, it's within 24 hours of, of the day you're looking at it. So and where should they go out. to? fishingthesara.com and scroll down you'll see the blog down there. So Fantastic. That and there it is. Fantastic. Thank you, Craig. As always, thank you, Ricky. We appreciate it, buddy. Our thanks to Craig Sutton for a great Nassar report where the billfish bite just continues to be off the chain. Now, let's go up to northeast Florida because a week ago right now, it was cold, it was windy, and we weren't catching any fish. Captain David Borries, have things changed a little? I would say so, Ricky, quite a bit. Our water temperature finally got back up to where we like it. It hit the magic number of 65. And, man, this week the fish have been biting. Uh, lots of reds, both in the sh- deep and in the shallow. And, uh, you know, back in the creeks, we're actually seeing some places that are full of grass shrimp. And, boy, when you can find a creek like that, you're going to do really good because the redfish are just going crazy on them. The fish have been biting good. We've been getting some oversize. We just released a about a 32, 33 inch or just a little while ago. Man, I mean, it came out of 20 feet of water, and it it, it was it was quite a fight, quite a fight. But the uh, the neat thing going on right now, Rick, is we have sand trout, the silver trout. Right. Uh, we got a real good uh, yellowmouth trout spawn going on right now, hmm. and they are just tearing them up in the river. And guys are really saying they're catching some really big ones. We had we had one yesterday that uh, was a 19 incher, and that's pretty good size for that's a for those fine trout. one. Yeah, that's a fine yeah, one. Yeah, and the and she was just fat, full of row. Uh, of course, we just we went ahead and released it, but a lot of the guys are reporting some real good yellowmouth trout bite, sheephead bite, definitely picking up. I see. Ah, uh, that's outstanding. Now, any sign of any mullet yet? Not really. No, nope, no. Nope. Haven't seen the. Haven't seen a, a run of them. Run a mullet yet. Few reports of some bluefish here and there. The whiting bite along the beach has just been outstanding. Guys are just you know going out there and having no problems catching twenty to thirty whiting on the beach right now. Yeah, you're right, David. It, the surf fishing has been phenomenal. Now, as you work your way further offshore, uh, you get out to the warmer water, you get out to the edge of the Gulf Stream or along what we call the Twenty Eight Fathom Ledge. Steve Proctor was there and had tr- sixty trigger fish on Sunday with lots of Vermilion snapper to go with him. Just a really really strong day. Trolling is slow. It's just there's a mahi here and there, and a blackfin tuna here and there, but there's not very many of anything. So the trolling hasn't started yet. The bottom fishing's getting better, but offshore the ocean has been unusually quiet this winter, and I think it's because the water's been unusually cold. David, as always, we appreciate it so much, buddy. Thank you. All right, Rick, I'll talk to you next week in tight lines, everybody. Look forward to talking to you next week. Captain David Borries from Backwater Adventures. You know, if I had to pick a time I'd rather be in fresh water than salt water, it would certainly be right now. The water is warming up, the plants are blooming, and the bass are just waiting to see something swimming overhead or crawling along the bottom. There is nothing more fun than watching a bass smash a DOA PT over the top of some hydrilla or crawling a DOA snake through the grass at daylight for the most heart-stopping strike that you've ever had. Best of all, once the sun is up, you can walk a DOA worm along the bottom right through Mama Bass's bed. That's right. In freshwater assault, DOA gives you the unfair advantage. Now... 
Let's swing down to East Central. We know who that is. <laughs> Captain Jim Ross runs the whole area down there, and he's about to give us a report. Jimmy, are you with us? I'm here, buddy. I'm here. How are you doing today, Rick? Good. I was scared I was losing you there for a minute. I thought I heard you choking. Uh, well, I was just uh, I sucked in a bug or something. Hell, I don't know what I did. <laughs> we were just talking about that not long ago. Yep, gonna be a no, gonna be a few no seams get sucked in when the wind's not blowing now. You know, you know how Mosquito Lagoon is, right? Oh, they don't they don't call it that for nothing. That's for sure. You got, you got that right, brother. You got that right. Tell me what's going on with your fishing. How's your week been? Well, the past week was superior. Um, better than anticipated, to be honest with you. Um, in the in the lagoon system, just about every bridge, every uh, canal, the haulover canal, the barge canal, anywhere where there's rock, there were drum. I mean, absolutely everywhere. Mm. Just absolutely everywhere. Some of the schools had four and five hundred fish in them. Mm. It was ridiculous. It's the most drum I've ever seen in my life in this lagoon system. However. That changed, as things do, Yep, <laughs> as all things do. Uh, I just got off the water today. We didn't catch a single drum, not the first one. Hmm. So, uh, you know, we went from absolutely whacking them to where the heck did they go? I saw three on my first stop this morning in Titusville. I did not, and that was at 7.15 in the morning. I just came off the water. I saw maybe maybe 50 uh, and that's not grouped together that's scattered around um, and it's a very popular place we all fish is right there by the railroad bridge I saw 50 of them in groups of three to maybe eight fish a piece uh, very very scattered fishery compared to what it was the, at the end of last week it's just um uh, kind of perplexing, to be honest with you, how we can have so many. And then between me and the five other guides that were working in the Titusville and Mesquite Lagoon area today, none of us found any. Yeah, we, we don't so know we'll where they go. Like we, <laughs> we, yeah, we, we did find some, you know, we did find, like like late, late in the day, we did find some fish, but let's just say none of us caught any fish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Just, uh, you know, the before the new moon, after the new moon kind of scenario, um, that, that moon has a lot. It, it plays a lot with those fish whenever they're spawning. And so we don't know where they went, what they were doing, but we were in the flats. We were in the channel edges. We checked the spoil islands. We checked the bridges. We checked the canals. We checked just about everywhere that you could possibly think to check. And uh, I do not, I to, uh, you know, I just got off the water at 5 o'clock-ish. And I don't know of anybody that caught a drum today. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. That's something. And, and last week they were everywhere. Uh, what else is going on in you, your area, you, Jim? You couldn't, you couldn't get away from them last week. Yeah. Well, Kobe have showed up. You yeah. know, we talked about that last week and the week before. They're showing up. There's lots and lots of manta rays right now between Cocoa Beach and, and Sebastian Inlet. Lots of manta rays. Okay. However, the manta rays aren't holding very many fish, but they're are some good fish being caught. Um, I've heard of some 50-plus pound fish in the last two days that have showed up off of some of the rays, which are absolutely, you know, uh, anymore. Those are very large cobia, uh, seeing that our average cobia is about 31 inches. So to get one that's in the 50-pound class, those, those are nice fish. Most of the keeper fish seem like they're in about the 24 to 27-pound range. Okay. Or just, or just barely legal. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there's three three different year classes there or something. You got the fifty, couple of fifty pounders, you know, a lot more twenty five ish pounders, and uh, uh, about the same number of barely legal, and then those just unders seem to be predominant. So the one thing that I would tell people right now is bring a net with you, um, because there's so many undersized fish. They look much bigger in the water, you know. And you put them on the deck and you get deck shrinkage. And all of a sudden, that fish that you gaffed is 32 inches yeah. instead of 33 yeah. at the fork. And now you're putting a dead fish back over the side of the boat. Because if he doesn't die from the wound, our sharks are at, that was the next thing I'm going to, our sharks are here in force. Mm -hmm. um, we've got bulls, we've got sandbars cruising the beaches um, and the reefs. And then the black tips and spinners are schooled up. And 
if you find a school of them, top water plugs, there's nothing better than catching a shark on a top water plug. Mm-hmm. Um, it, when it comes, when it comes to fishing for sharks, because they are very aggressive on a top water chugger plug. And that's a lot of, a lot of fun. But, um, you put a 32 inch Kobe with a gaff mark back in him over the side of the boat. He's done. Yeah. He's toast. So just be careful with those fish and use the net if, if it's at all possible. Yeah, you know, it's funny to me that um, now that you mention it, now that we've been required to carry descending devices for uh, our snapper, and, and, and I understand that and I support that wholeheartedly, we should also be required to, to t- carry a landing net for our cobia, uh, our mahi, our, there's a lot of fish, our grouper. There's a lot of fish that, that you have got to bring in and measure before you make that call. And, uh, well, yeah, I, before I, you make that gaff shot. Yeah. And I sure think, and let me tell you something else I've learned, Jim Ross, a, a 12 to 15 pound dolphin or a 18 to 25 pound cobia is a much calmer animal in a landing net than he is with a gaff in his side. And By I, far. I don't have, By far. I don't have any trouble netting a 25 pound cobia tossing him in the box and closing the lid and, and we never have to deal with him on the deck just rolling right out of the net right into the ice that's exactly right it'll calm him right down hey jimmy a quick question yep. for you all right you and i've been at sure this thing. you and i've been at this thing forever what of your fishery and black drum may well be the answer what species of your fisheries are better than they were 20 years ago, and which ones have dropped off dramatically? What's been the big changes in the East Central fishery? Well, the black drum notwithstanding, uh, you know, that we do have them throughout the year in much greater numbers than, than what we ever have had, to my knowledge, in the past. I would have to go with reds. Uh, the red snapper are extremely prevalent on our, on our reefs and, yeah. and, and wrecks. Uh, my best snapper spot, I can't even catch, fl- I'm sorry, my best flounder spot, I, I see that there, I mis- misquoted what it was even anymore. I, I caught so many snapper off that spot, I don't <laughs> even call it my flounder spot anymore. Um, it, to, for, me to, for me to be able to go out there and slow troll live pogies on the 90-foot reef and have 25- and 30-pound red snapper striking my live baits and then sure. running me back into the reef, there's, there, that fishery has rebounded exponentially. Um, and I would say that, you know, there's, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of discussion. We all have our personal opinions about it. I would say that that fishery to my knowledge is way better than it's ever been any time that I can ever remember it in my life. Oh, I agree. Now, staying with that reds scenario, our redfish fishery is absolutely dismal right now. It is mm. the worst I have ever seen it in my life. And this includes back when, when netting was allowed and we were fighting to get the nets out of the water when, you know, Carl Wickstrom was leading the charge on the, on the net ban across the state of Florida. We had more redfish then than we do now. And, it's, and it, there's only one explanation for it and one explanation only, and that's habitat loss. We don't have grass. I mean, we have 3 to 5% of the grass that we used to have, uh, you, you know, a number of years ago. And when you look at 2020 and 2021 and just miles and miles, Brevard County alone, notwithstanding Volusia County, notwithstanding Indian River County, which we, you know, we also cover into those counties. Brevard County alone is 80 miles long. It was 80 miles of grass flat. If there was three feet of water or less, which the majority of the Indian banana and mosquito lagoon is less than three feet, there was grass. So you're talking about an 80 mile long stretch of grass along every shoreline in, in our lagoon system. If I, if you would, were going to give me a hundred dollars, I don't know if I could find a blade of grass right now. I I honestly don't. I understand. I understand. I don't even know. I don't even know where I would begin to look because every flat that I've fished, from Piney to Causeway, in the Indian River, all the way north into the Mosquito Lagoon, with the exception of the super super far back coves on the eastern side of the Mosquito Lagoon, that only have about eight inches of water in them right now, there is no grass. Everything it's a moonscape. It's sand or rock as far as you can see, and with that grass that is growing. It's only growing there because 
the water's low right now. Next month, next in, in April, when the when the moon starts bringing more water into the lagoon system, and then into May when the water gets in those spots where it's eight inches high right now, when it gets twelve and thirteen inches, the manatees are going to be crawling all the way. They're going to be crawling hundreds of yards to, across barren sand to get back to those little pockets. Yeah, they won't be able to swim very easily because they're fourteen inches, sixteen inches deep. But they will literally crawl themselves back there to eat that grass. I'm gonna tell you um, something. I'm gonna tell you something, Jim. You may have hit something right there, and we're, we're we need to wrap this up. But I can tell you that they're now reporting on the news and on the national news, even that hundreds of manatees are starving to death. That may be the ticket to getting people serious about water quality. It's as plain and clear to me as can be. If we don't stop this excessive pollution of our lagoon system, we're going to continue to watch our fishery die. And that's, and that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the fish that have the ability to cope and not rely on grass. They are flourishing. We're seeing more tarpon. We're seeing more black drum. We're even seeing more pompano, but redfish, trout, pinfish, pigfish, all of the shrimps, all of those little things that rely on grass, Every single one of those species are disappearing at an alarming rate. Yep, yep. I I agree with you, Jim. I really do, and and I even agree with you now on making it statewide because we've got to do something to help our waterway. Thank you, buddy. Let's talk next week about good fishing, shall we? I look forward to telling you a cobia story next week. I I'm look forward be going to hearing it a couple it. of times I'll, this week. I look forward <laughs> to hearing it. Thank you, Jimmy. Take care, Rick. All right, thanks to Jim Ross. For a great report from Central Florida where he said the black drum are around, but they don't show themselves every day. Now let's hop on down to one of my favorite places, Stewart, Florida, to check in with Captain John Earhart from the Chaos and the Mayhem. Captain John, are you with us? Yes, sir. Glad to be here. Anything biting down there, my boy? I got to tell you, we got some pretty phenomenal fishing right now, Rick. Yeah? Uh, I fished this morning offshore. Uh, the clients went five for ten on cobia, and Ooh. these fish were up to fifty pounds today. Ooh. So there's a lot, of, a lot of big fish around. So you definitely want to beef your tackle up if you're targeting this, these fish because you got to get them in quick. If, if you if you take too long reeling these fish in, you're just going to feed the sharks, and, and that's the absolute last thing you want to do with the cobia because once the shark eats it, you ain't getting none of it back. Oh, oh, oh that's terrible. Hasn't, hasn't been much action trolling this week. You know, I've seen a few sailfish caught, a few mahi here and there. But, you know, most everybody's targeting the cobia with really good success. So it's been pretty easy to limit out. And, you know, just got to have heavy tackle, double, triple strong hooks, and, and try and winch these fish in. Because if, if you don't muscle them in, chances are you're not going to catch them. So definitely bring extra heavy tackle and, and be prepared to battle these things and get them past the sharks. John, how are they catching them? Are they jigging them or live bait fishing them? What are they doing? A combination of both. Uh, you know, we're fishing live bait, and then when, when you get one on, you know, you usually have four or five swim up to the boat, so I'll have two other guys standing there with jigs. You just drop the jig down and jig it in front of the thing's face, and the next thing you know, you got a triple hookup. Super. That's fantastic. Anything going on inshore? Uh, the inshore fishing's been pretty steady this week. We've had a, a real good snook bite catching a lot of keeper sized fish a lot of big jack crevels up to 20 pounds so you know you might want to use a little bit heavier rod or make sure you got plenty of backing on your reel because i had a couple almost fool me this week well they've certainly got the muscle to do it there's no doubt about that that's a great report john i don't know what the answer is on the sharks i wish i did because they're all up and down the coast and they're now eating all kinds of fish they it's funny there used to be some fish they just really left alone i was used to used to losing kingfish to them and i was used to maybe losing bonita to them but now it just seems like nothing's off limits they'll hit a sailfish they'll hit a mahi they'll hit anything and there's just so many of them i don't know what the answer is but we got to find them we appreciate it john tell me we can talk with you next week yes sir i'll talk to you all next week all right thanks so much captain john Earhart from the chaos and the mayhem checking in our right, thanks to john Earhart for a great stewart report now we're going to head on down to miami to check in with the mayor of south beach Captain Alan Sherman. Alan, are you with us? Rick, I am here, but I am definitely not in politics. 
Oh, come on. You'd make a great mayor. No way, man. <laughs> Tell me about your fishing this week. Well, finally, the winds have laid off. The yes. sun is shining. It's like summertime here again. And uh, I'll tell you, everybody is arming up, uh, loading up with bait, sharpening their hooks, and they're heading offshore. And they're catching some fish. For the ocean side, along the beaches, there's been Spanish mackerel, bluefish, pompano, snook, blue runners, and jack gravels. Not in big numbers, but if you're there at the right time, you hit it just right. Uh, there's a good chance you're going to catch some of these fish and maybe even a lot. A little further offshore, the, there's kingfish, tailfish, bonitas, black and tuna, and this stuff is all on the surface. Uh, and uh, they're catching these fish uh, anywhere from 80 feet out to about, I'd say, 300 feet, uh, looking for some edges. Uh, we haven't had much current the last few days, so it did slow down the sailfish bite a little bit, but they're still catching some. There's been a few uh, yellowfin tunas around. How about uh, that? And uh, one got, you know, eaten by a, by a shark. Mm. These are big, 140 pounds. Uh, the, so The tuna was? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, oh, my goodness. That's terrible. I know. All right. So there's been, uh, on the inside, there's mullet schools migrating uh, through our area. And there's been some snook and tarp in it feeding off of those mullet schools, some large jack revels, uh, fish anywhere from 6 to, I'd say, 12 pounds. Uh, a few sea trout, you know, not a lot because we don't have really any healthy seagrasses anymore, but this is their spawning season, so there are a few still around, and this is when, you know, one of the better times to, to target them. And I would hit the same grass flats, even though there's no grass there that you used to fish uh, when they were around. And you, you have a good chance of uh, getting into some of those. There's barracudas and some lady fish as well. The only other good fishery we have is the freshwater fishing. Our, our water levels are really still high, but there's been quite a few peacock bass in the canals. And then there's some largemouth mixed in with them. Uh, but that action's been steady. So that's one of the best bets uh, of the week. Alan, I, I, let me ask you, you and I have been at this thing so long. Let's look back at the last 20 years. How has your fishery changed? By that, I mean, what's gotten better, if anything's gotten better, and what is not as good as it was 20 years ago? So the, the thing that stands out the most for me, because that's the fish I cut my teeth on, was uh, sea trout. I was taught how to catch them back in you know my early childhood, fishing right here in, in North Biscayne Bay. And for all the years that I've been fishing, up until the last four or five, you could count on those fish uh, on almost any day. They were simple, artificials, live baits. Uh, it was no trouble catching your limit. Uh, but today, we just have lost 99% of our healthy seagrasses. They're just gone. And when they left, so did the sea trout. <clears throat> so the biggest change that we've, we've had to deal with here in, in Biscayne Bay. And I know it's not just North Bay, it's South Bay, and it's even further up the coast. So that would be the number one. If I was looking for something that has gotten better, I, I, I talked about the peacock bass fishing. Right. I can't really going on with it right now. I'm not familiar with the peacocks being caught uh, as many as are being caught in the conservation areas of the Everglades, the canal systems, uh, uh, the Tamiami Trail, the Alligator Alley Canal, the Route 27, the Sawgrass, um, those those canals, instead of having tons of largemouth and low water levels, we have quite a few. I mean, like, you know, the other day I had a charter and we, we caught 60 fish in a four four and a half hour charter and 30 were peacock bass. How about that? Uh, the action was nonstop the whole entire day. We caught them all on artificial lures and everybody that I saw fishing out in those canals was doing the same thing. So this time of the year, we were, we're used to having largemouth bass fishing like that. And, and the, the pan fish, because the water levels are usually dropping like crazy. That hasn't happened yet. And it may not happen. But having all those peacock bats in the same places that we used to catch tons of largemouth, uh, that, that's unusual in, in my uh, 
mind anyway. I wonder if they're pushing out the largemouths. I don't know. But I know up in my area, certainly our, our biggest drop-off has been grouper. We get essentially just almost no grouper uh, in what we call the party grounds anymore, whereas 20 years ago it was a very, very targeted species for us. But there's no question we've got more snook than we did. I don't snook. know if snook are adapting to colder water because we've had a pretty cold winter, but the guys yeah. have caught them right through the winter. And I don't know if the snook are adapting or if the water's actually warming a little bit. But there are three or four guides here in Jacksonville now that – that target snook, and that was unheard of 20 years ago. Well, let me add something to that. Yesterday, I fished Flamingo, and my, my anglers were from Texas, and they're targeting tarpon there on a daily basis. I'll be darned. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for a great report. I look forward to talking with you next week. The year was 1953 when one of the true pioneers of big game fishing hung it up. It was none other than Ernest Hemingway. You know... I just don't want to do it anymore, he's credited with saying. The tackle has become so sophisticated that the fish just don't have a chance. Can you imagine walking Ernest Hemingway through the aisles of one of the strike zone fishing headquarters and throwing the latest and greatest from Shimano at him? Wow. Can you imagine handing him a Saragusa spinner that weighs less than his bait did and could put more torque on a rampaging tuna than the giant old reels of his day? Now, Ernest, I'm afraid you left us a little too early, my boy. The fights with great fish still go on today, and we still sometimes get beat. But if I were a sea monster of your day, I think I'd still rather do battle with you than face the tools that Shimano has stocked the Strike Zone Fishing Headquarters with 68 years later. All right, we got Nick Stancic on the line, and I got a little question for him because I've heard a rumor from down there. Hey, this is Dave Marciano from the Hard Merch. I'm calling down to the Keys. I need a, a screamer story, Nick. Have we heard some screamers down there, Captain Stanzik? We need this fish to feed my family. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose him. Don't lose him. <laughs> well, I, I didn't get to fish, Rick. You know, I haven't been out in about a week, eight days. Just because we had so many days of 20 to 25 knot winds, so I postponed my uh, few sword fishing trips ahead. But... Captain Alex on the Kalex, he had two incredible days. He caught two bluefin tunas, one each day back to back, which is uh, you know, unheard of down here. Wow. Wow. Tell me, how did he catch them and how big were they? You know, they've been seeing a few up and down the past week, and we had that wind, like I said, blowing 20, 25 knots, and the current had been the same. And uh, he woke up the other morning, and they've been a few being seen, you know, from Palm Beach down here. And he's like, I'm going to bring the big rod. He grabbed his 130. They had a couple fresh mackerel in the cooler. They rigged one. Colby Mason rigged it. And um, they see this. I guess they've seen a few in the morning, he said. Then midday, they have his big pack of fish, 10 or 12 fish swimming down sea. And they baited it, and they caught one in about 45 minutes. They estimated 700 pounds, which they released. And then, obviously, that was a catch of a lifetime. They go back out the next day. Johnny Morris flies in and goes with them from Bass Pro Shop. And they catch another one. I don't know if it was quite as big, 600, 600, 700 pounds, whatever it was, but two days, unbelievable. That's fantastic. That That is really cool. And every fisherman in the east coast of Florida just thought, I wonder if my 50-wide would handle one of those. <laughs> I can tell yeah. you. Man, yeah, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Catch him and, yeah, have the right tackle and be ready. He's, uh, big, he's very good at what he does. Obviously, he's one of the best around and uh, obviously nice little bit of Luck comes down, then you get the right fish that wants to bite. So they put their time in and uh, well, he is a he is a perfect good. example of an expert getting an opportunity and knowing exactly what to do. Nick, we've exactly. seen even up here in Jacksonville where we get quite a right whale migration. Um, we've seen giant fish with these right whales. It would almost have to be uh, blue fins, but, uh, but I don't, I don't, I can't say that I've ever laid my eyes on one, but that is a great story. Anything else important going on down there in the keys? Yes. There's been a few sales on the reef. There was a few cobias mixed in. So it's been fair overall. Um, not red hot. We haven't had the huge push of fish, but springtime is here. Cause we're starting to see, you know, a few dolphin, a few cobia, a few sails in the back country. I know there's been, even with all that wind we had last week, the tarpon were still biting a lot of fish jumping up. But uh, my brother caught a few tarpon today, and 
there's been fish from 30 pounds all the way up to over 100 pounds. So, uh, Got- always around the bridges and in the back. So that's uh, hopefully it'll be a good season here coming out the next few months. Okay, one more question. Are you set up for a bluefin tuna if one comes by? <laughs> if he eats my swordfish bait, maybe we'll catch him. But uh, I don't have a big rod on top ready. Gotcha. Thank you, Nick. We appreciate it very much. All right. Thanks, Rick. Bye-bye. Captain Nick Stanzik, how about that? Two bluefin tuna for the Kalex. Captain Alex Adler down in Ala Mirada. That is a great, great story. Now we're going to hop on up into the Big Bend area and find out what's going on with Captain William Tony. William, how are you? Doing great, man. We got some beautiful spring weather, azaleas everywhere, fish are biting, gnats are chewing. I tell you what, it can't get any better. No, no, it can't, no. Uh, you know what? I'm not a freshwater fisherman, William, but I'll freshwater fish in this weather with everything blooming and the bass chasing oh, stuff absolutely. on top. Yeah. I mean, I'll, boy, I'll freshwater fish in this weather in a minute. Yep, absolutely. You know, that's everything right now. This, if you could just put Florida's weather on hold, we would have to build a giant gate up there and just you couldn't keep the people out. I mean, it's just about as perfect as it can get weather-wise. Fishing's been great. I tell you what, our snook bite here on the Big Bend has been incredible. You know, it, it seems that every year we get more and more of them. And, and I think what has been the learning curve for a lot of anglers here on the Big Bend, and we learn very fast, is how to catch and target them because it's become such a viable species to, you know, in our quiver of, of uh, you know, arsenal or whatever you want to call it on our inshore species. I'll be darned. What else is going on? Well, trout bite is excellent. I actually had a day on last Friday, fished the full day, never used one live bait, no shrimp, no pinfish, nothing like that, all on artificial. We caught over 20 redfish. We caught five snook and kept one keeper that was in the slot. And trout were just being such a nuisance. If you threw a little bit too far from the rocky structure, it was going to be a trout, no doubt. And uh, everything on artificial, I mean, some of the best action I've had all spring, just, you know, just beautiful weather. Now, today, the tides are a little bit different. So looking near the end of the week and everything, as, as our tides progress about an hour each day, we're going to start losing this new moon phase. So by the weekend, the tides are going to be late, late, late in the evening or very early in the morning. So that's going to leave like a pretty much going out during the day. And what we've been doing is fishing those deeper flats, anywhere from 8 to 12 foot of water, catching Spanish mackerel, sea bass, lots of trout, uh, bluefish, jack crevel, uh, just about anything. You get close to some structure out there, there's a lot of grouper, and they're breaking off the light tackle. But, you know, no big deal. It's just a good, fun time to be out there. I, it's just a perfect time to be out there. You know, William, I always think we are more creatures of instinct than we realize. I, I, I mean, instinct as in from primal man. When when it gets like this, you got to be outside, don't you? Absolutely. You know, I as much as I don't like the time change and getting used to it, you know, it's being home right now, there's enough time. I could mow my grass. I could get those projects done outside so that frees up time for later the next day to go and get out there and, and do some fishing. You know, that little bit of extra daylight every evening, uh, having, you know, folks having to get home around 5 and then it's dark. You don't have that right now. So you get a lot done. It just feels so much more productive all the way around. Oh, no doubt about it. Cap, that's a great report. I'm glad to hear it. Now, are you pretty much booked up every day? That right now, all the way until about the end of June. So mm. I'm I'm pretty set now with the new baby and all. I take family <laughs> time out, so that's 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 uh, you know there's some boat time in for my baby girl and being my wife and family, which you know I, you got to fit that in there. But as far as business goes, it's very strong here on the Big Bend, and I'm really hoping and everything that around May first, I know they're supposed to open our South Region just just south of us toward Tampa Bay which uh, may alleviate a lot of pressure here on the Big Bend, you know, as far as keeping, you know, even if it's a few trout or, you know, one red like our limit is here, you know, I think a lot of folks that want to travel here to get a couple fish to go and eat won't have to travel as far, and then it will help us, you know, take away a lot of the pressure. 
but you know, we got a lot of spring break activities right now and even bike week because it's all the way across the state. But if you take state road 44, you're only two hours to our side. And believe it or not, there's a lot of bikers over here and I guess they like to ride and Ozella trails on one of their bike week deals. I mean, I don't, that's a curvy road. You don't want to go down there to Pex and hang out too late drinking. Cause you won't get back out. You'll just <laughs> run out there in the marsh. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I'm sure there's been a few motorcycles parked in the marsh out there. There's no doubt. Oh, uh, absolutely. As always cap, we appreciate it so much. Please tell me we can talk with you next week. Yep. I'll be right here fishing away and breathing all these beautiful blossoms and blooms of spring. Yeah. Don't breathe in any of those no see though. I've done that enough times. That, that's not a lot no. of fun. <laughs> exactly. You know, get a good evening with the sea breeze. You got it. Thank you, Cap. Take care. Our thanks to William Tony for a great Big Bend report. Now let's pull into the Northwest area and talk with Captain Kevin Lanier. Kevin, how are you? Hey, Captain Rick, we're doing good today. How about yourself? Outstanding. It's warm. It's sunny. There's a few fish biting. Life is good in Northeast Florida. Absolutely. Absolutely. Same way in the uh, panhandle. Beautiful weather, warm. Uh, the breeze has been holding off the uh, last three or four days, so it's going to pick up today, but uh, we've had some good fishing. Good deal. What are you catching? Well, we went offshore uh, this past weekend, and we got into some uh, really nice keeper triggers. Uh, vermilion bite has uh, kind of died off for us, but uh, we got some porgies. We got uh, released a lot of red snapper. Uh, we got two trips, though, that people got to take home a lot of fish to eat. And uh, the fun of uh, catching and releasing amberjack, uh, red snapper, and all that was good. We've been toying around with some of that slow pitch jigging, and man, I tell you what, I'm a I'm a believer at this point. Mm hmm. I haven't done it yet, but I've heard so much about it. It's uh, it's obviously it's a whole lot different than regular deep jigging, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's a lot easier on the arms and the body. Trust me. Hmm. <laughs> you just kind of let the jig rock up and down, right? Well, yeah, you you know, you go to the bottom, bounce it off, and you start working it up, but your lifts are slow, and you drop, and then you reel, slow lift, drop, reel like that, and you could tweak it a little bit more, but it ain't anything like that old vertical jigging where you had to move that thing so fast. Huh, and you think it's more productive? Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. I got to I gotta learn it. That's all there is to it. I got to learn it. Yep, 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 definitely. I do recommend it. That's next. All right. Now your snapper and grouper are both closed. Now you're able to keep one trigger fish per person or two. One. One it has to be how big? And it's got to be, it's got to be 15 inches at the flat of the tip. Okay. Okay. I cannot figure out why the fisheries council in the Gulf is so protective of triggers, and in the east, on the east where I live, they tell us that trigger fish are the bottom fish equivalent of mahi that they spawn just endlessly and and you almost can't outfish them how can that they can't both be true well you know the thing about it is what what i think has to be done is i think that they have to genetically test both the atlantic trigger and the gulf trigger and they will prove that they're the same fish and once they do that then it's a whole ecosystem you're not counting gulf and you're not counting Atlantic. I think you can do the same thing when we're at Snapper. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's a genetic difference in the two, okay, I'll buy that. But there's not. You'll mm -hmm. have a hard time convincing me without a scientific, non-biased study that they're not all the genetically the same thing. Well, the thing that they have to work toward, Kevin, and they refuse to do it, is balance. Can you imagine how much more enjoyable and how many more people would be fishing offshore if we could keep one red snapper per person year round and don't, don't please don't insult my intelligence by telling me that we'd fish them out that way. Cause we would not. No, I agree with you. The red snapper are taking over the reef system and we have to bring them into check. We have to put some balance back into our fishery. Kevin, thank you so much. Please tell me we can talk to you next week. We'll talk to you again next week. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Captain Kevin Lanier from KC sport fishing. 
You know what Yamaha Outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu Marine Engine Oils. Blood, 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 blood. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu Full Synthetic and Marine Performance Formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu Marine Oils at your nearest Yamaha Outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to you second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in inglis florida or check them out online at youngboats.com our thanks to captain kevin lanier for a great northwest florida report now let's head on out the panhandle and check in with captain tyler massey tyler how are you i'm doing good rick how are you guys i uh, doing excellent buddy what's been going on in pensacola fish haven't really popped off yet but now can finally report that stuff's turning around. The inshore bite is, you know, is getting great. Sheep's head are moving towards our pass, and they're biting good on our uh, our jetties and then the deep rocks in the middle of the pass. So just the last couple of days, they're really starting to bite, you know, pretty regularly. We've got Spanish mackerel showing up in big numbers, and guys are catching those just off the beach, you know, trolling, throwing spoons, that kind of stuff. So that's been a good fishing, too. And trout and redfish are moving out onto the flat. So, a lot of activity, you know, no matter where you go in the bay. I would think that if the Spanish are showing up, the kingfish can't be far behind, can they? Yep, not not too far behind. Usually about, you know, two weeks or so uh, is, is when we start to see the kings. But, yeah, it won't be long. And then and then everything follows that. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's it. The Spanish, the good thing about the Spanish mackerel, they're the start of the season. It means it's time to go fishing again. Captain Tyler Massey wraps up our report for this week, and it's been a lot of fun. Golly, it's, it's hard to believe that the bite in Costa Rica has gone on like it has. The double-digit sales every day just fascinates me. It really does. You get up into northeast Florida, and things have broken loose since it has warmed up. Now the redfish are biting like crazy where they weren't very well at all just a short time ago. Come on down the coast of the ways. Jim Ross said there were th hundreds of big black drum everywhere you look, and then all of a sudden they were gone. Cobia are as far up as Sebastian. There's some in the Fort Pierce area. If you're looking for them, you better launch in the Cape and run south for a while. And how about Captain Nick Stanzik's story from the Kalex? That is really something too Bluefin tuna in the six to seven hundred pound range, back to back. Johnny Morris from Bass Pro Shops was on board for the second day's fish, but they've been seeing them come through groups of four and six up to ten. That's just that's one of the great things about offshore fishing is you absolutely never know what you're going to see next. Come on up the coast just a ways, and spring is just starting. Once you get up into the Big Bend, the trout and reds are really thick, and you get too close to the rocks, and the trout have got you. Uh, it's great to hear stories like that. Tyler Massey filling us in on how things are just getting started in Pensacola. Spring is here, folks. I, for one, am glad to see it.
Hey, this week's Florida Sportsman Action Spotter has been brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people back to nature. By DOA Lures, your unfair advantage. By Tournament Master Chum, the best chum on earth. And by Nasara Paradise Fishing, your dream vacation. And we can't forget young boats. Hey, if you want the finest in flats, bay, and offshore hybrids, you need to check out youngboats.com. I'm Captain Rick Riles. For all of us right here at Florida Sportsman, hey, do us a favor. Go on wherever you get your podcast and rate us and like us. To, and please, if you'll subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. It helps us out. As for me, I can't wait to be back here next week. But until then, I'll see you on the rip. <laughs>